Welcome to With You Every Step, the solo travel podcast that explores, explains and hopefully inspires you to travel the world by yourself. I'm your host, Michelle Lee. This week's episode is going to be a little bit different than my other episodes. Normally I have a guest with me, but today it's just going to be me giving you Michelle's pre-travel Tip. A lot of people ask me all the time about how I do things because I'm traveling so much and they want to really know how I kind of set up my trip. So that's what I'm going to explain to you today. I'm going to give you a bit of a breakdown on things that I have in place before I leave and just little tips on some things that I do. Most of them you might know, some you might not. Hopefully there is something that might help you. The first thing I do is I go to a travel agent. If it's a small trip, I will often book it myself. But if it's one of my big international trips, I often will travel for about three months, kind of around three month mark for most of my big trips. So for those trips, I definitely go through a travel agent. I'm going to multiple countries. I'm trying to fit in as much as possible. So I really want to be taken care of and know that I haven't missed anything. This happened to my last trip, actually. One of my flights got cancelled. I wasn't told about it. My travel agent was. They reorganized another flight for me, sent me the information with the flight. I didn't have to worry about anything, which is really good because at that point I was in the Amazon. I didn't have Wi-Fi. I came back to find an email that said, don't worry, we've sorted everything. It's all good. Your flight got cancelled. We've re-put you on another flight. All sorted. So little things like that I think is super important when you're going on a really big trip. I understand within the US, I'm pretty sure you have to pay a fee to go through a travel agent. In Australia, we don't. They take a commission. You don't even know about it. They give you a price. Don't know what their deal is on the other side, which I'm quite happy with. I don't pay anything extra apart from what the price is that they tell me. Most of the time, it's a pretty good deal. If I'm trying to book it myself, I find it's very similar prices. Some trips I have found that, I think it was in Europe, some of the low-cost carriers. One of the flights that was on my package from my travel agent, and it was a lot more expensive that I could find. So then when I found it, I showed her she did the same price. So that was sorted. But I always kind of do double check that as well, just to keep them on their toes, making sure they're not trying to do something they shouldn't be doing. So that's what I do with my flights. Then I print it all out. I like to have a hard copy with me while I'm traveling. The same with my hostels, hotels. I like to write on there. I am very OCD with a lot of little things like that. So I have a folder with me that I take. It slides in the back of my backpack. It's flat. You don't even know it's there, but it's there for emergencies. And that's why I have it. I write on the every hostel or hotel if I've paid for it or not, how much I have to pay when I get there in case I've paid a deposit, if there's transfers included or not, and how is the best way to get there, which I've normally already have done that research. So if I find somewhere within the US, there might be a shuttle bus from the airport, certain countries, it might be a taxi, or it might be you need to organize a transfer depending on the type of country you're going to. Some countries are not safe to get cabs as a solo female traveler. So that's the kind of stuff that I will pre-organize and make sure I've researched. I've researched all of that information. I find that super important. Then organizing money. People ask me all the time, do you take cash with you? What do you, credit cards do you use? Now, I do a little bit of everything. I have something called a Qantas cash card. So that's with Qantas frequent flyers. They can send out all their members a card. It's like a travel card that you load money onto. The best thing about this card, it doesn't have any fees. So I really like that for that reason. You can load whatever money you want onto it. You can load it into different currencies as well, which I kind of don't do that so much anymore. I just load on in Australian because the ATM just transfers it. But if there's a really good rate and you know there's going to be a drop, absolutely do that. Put it into the currency that's on there. They often give you a pretty good rate on there as well. I like that. I like to have loaded money on there in case something happens. I only put a few hundred or so on there at a time. At least then if it it goes missing, it's not the end of the world. 
I also have other cards that are my normal banking cards that I use back in Australia. They are debit credit cards, so they are able to be used while you're traveling. That's handy. It's good to have a few. I know some people even often go and get a credit card to be able to travel with. I looked at doing that because I'm a sucker for frequent flyer points, but the amount of fees on those cards, it's huge. And when you're a budget traveler, it might not be the best idea. So the Qantas cash card for me in Australia, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's easy. Everywhere accepts it. I only had one problem somewhere in Edinburgh that one place wouldn't accept it. And I hadn't taken my other card with me because I've never had an issue with it. And so I had a big argument with management there because they were trying to tell me I was ripping them off when I said it, there's money on my card. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. I also take a certain amount of sm a small amount of cash with me because I like to, if I'm going to another current, another country with a different currency, I like to have just a little bit of currency just in case there's not an ATM at the airport or that you can't get to straight away. It's good to have a little bit of cash. If you need to get a cab, you need to pay for that cab. Not all countries have ATMs where you can get cash out. Not all countries have cabs that take card either. So it is good to have a little bit of cash from those countries. And if I'm going to another country, I'll try and change it at the airport to get a little bit of money in that currency. Issues though. Something I found traveling through third world countries where their money is not worth as much as other countries, it is really hard to change it when you go somewhere else. So Ugandan money, I was not aware of this at that point and I was going down to South Africa. I thought, oh, it's still Africa. I wasn't thinking anything of it. I, by the time I got to the airport in South Africa, I thought, yep, yeah, let's get this sorted. Went there and they said, sorry, we don't exchange Ugandan money. I thought this was really odd. It's currency. I don't understand why you wouldn't change it. Nope, sorry, we don't do it here. I thought, oh, South Africa, whatever. Came back to Australia, thought, oh, that'll be okay. I'll go and change it. Went into all our banks here. They all told me the same thing. So I still have Ugandan money here that I can't change, which in their eyes is worthless. It's still worth a little bit of money in their eyes is worthless. So if anyone's going to Uganda and you want to give me you want to give me some cash for that money, I'll give it to you. Just hit me up. Yeah. So just be aware certain countries change it as you're leaving that country. I'm always aware of that now. Travel insurance. You've heard us talk about that before on with you every step. Travel insurance is super super important. I use Travel Insurance Direct TID, that's my preferred travel insurer while I'm traveling. I've used them for my last, I don't know, 10 trips. I think they're great. I've had to make a claim through them. I've never had an issue with them. They've been fabulous. Doesn't matter who you go through, do your research again. I've been told from people, get a credit card. In Australia, credit card gives you travel insurance. Read the fine print. It does not cover you for everything. For my trips, I go for nearly three months. Doesn't cover you. I think the one I looked at only covered you for the first, I'd say, month? I think. Don't hold me to that. It's not a very long amount of time and also doesn't cover you for certain things. I want to be covered for everything. If a family member gets sick, I want to be able to get home. If before I fly, I get sick and I can't go, I want to be covered. There are so many things that you need to look for when you're looking at travel insurance. They're important things. Some things you can't. My grandmother, when she was alive, was 100. I'm not covered if she gets sick. It's over a certain age that if someone gets sick, they don't cover you. I think it's ridiculous. It was still my grandmother, but that's the rules. So there are certain things. Make sure you read the fine print. It's super important, especially with the credit card travel insurances. Make sure you read the fine print. I don't have any pets, but if you have a pet, obviously you need to make sure that they're looked after. Please don't leave your pets alone while you're traveling. That sounds awful. I hope no one would ever do that, but you just never know. I have some babies though, and my babies are my plants. And my last trip, my brother was in charge of coming over and watering them. And we had some super hot days. And when he came over, 
everything had died. So I have now learnt that my next trip, I take my babies to my mum and my mum will look after my babies while I go. It wasn't my brother's fault. We had some ridiculous 40 degree days, which today I went out there and we only had, I think, a 28 degrees Celsius day. And one of my babies was already looking pretty flat, gave her some water and she's up there again. So it doesn't take much for my babies to to not last very long. But I'm going to give them to my mum for my next trip. Yes, mother, you are getting my baby's plants for my next trip when I'm away to look after them. I know you'll love it. Something that I, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that struggles with this, packing. Everyone asks, what do I take with me while I'm traveling? If you know me and you know me well, you know I am a heavy packer. I am not one of these light packers. I just can't do it. I feel like I don't take very much with me, but I have a lot of stuff with me. I will always take a suitcase or a big backpack, depending on the type of trip it's going to be. If I'm going to go to Europe, I'm taking a suitcase. If I'm going to South America and going hiking, I'm taking a backpack. But saying that, I now am getting older. I can't do the big backpack on my back anymore. I've got a lot of spine issues. I've got to be careful. So what I do is I take my suitcase plus a day backpack. So a smaller backpack that you can take on day hikes. And that's what I used for all my trip through South America. My big backpack stayed when we went on our big hikes at the hostel where we were returning back to. My day trip backpack made the trek with me. It was perfect. It was the right decision. I actually didn't know what I was going to do and I I think it was maybe the week before my trip had this brainstorm and went, oh my gosh, I'm going hiking. I have nothing to take with me. I need a backpack that's not going to break my back. And so I got this beautiful day backpack and it's fabulous. It's perfect. It was my carry-on. Like I said, I'm not a light packer. And I also am a makeup wearing lover. I love my makeup. So I take a makeup case, which would be on the larger side, probably compared to most girls that go traveling. Well, maybe not now with Instagram. I look at all these travel girls on Instagram and they are done to the nines. Like they've had a glam team look after them, which I don't quite understand. When you're traveling, I like to make my face look okay but not to the degree that these Instagram girls have. Anyway, that's a whole nother story again. So I take my makeup and a big case. It kind of takes up most of my carry-on, whichever carry-on that is, if it's a little suitcase one or a backpack, but I need it. I will never put my makeup in my big suitcase. I don't want that going underneath. It will get pinched. I wear good makeup. I don't want anyone taking that. I have also seen a lot of things online lately about protecting your suitcase to make sure people don't go through it. I don't know if that's a thing. I think that the airports will always go through your bags. And is there a possibility that something can go missing? Absolutely. I personally have never had anything stolen and don't really even think about it. All my valuables I will always keep with me. Always, if I buy something that I think is special, that I want as even a souvenir, I will keep it in my backpack and I'll just put something else, swap it out. I also do sometimes send packages home. I did it the last trip from the US. I sent home my big dress that I wore to the Oscars party and all things that I knew I wasn't going to wear again. They all got posted back home and I didn't have to worry about them again. It was super expensive. Postage within the US is ridiculously high, but it saved me having the stress of having those things and trying to fit them in. I still didn't feel like I packed very much. I only had maybe two pairs of pants. No, one pair of jeans, one pair of kind of soft, yogury, comfortable pants that I wear on the plane. I had a couple of t-shirts my hiking, two pairs of hiking pants because I was doing a lot of hiking and then my rain jacket. And I think that's the only jacket I took with me. Maybe I took a smaller little jacket as well, but I didn't take very much clothes with me. 
but hiking boots, I wear them on the plane. And in, if you're in a hot area and you got to wear those boots, when we're in the Galapagos, woo, that was killing me. But you have to wear them on the plane because they're too heavy to pack. I pack runners, running gear. I like to work out a little bit while I'm traveling. All these little things, especially when you're going for a long time, you need them. And people that say to me, oh, I just take a small little backpack and take like two items with me. Really? And then you look at Instagram and you think, this doesn't make sense. Something's not right somewhere. I'm a heavy packer. I can't, I don't understand these people that aren't. Yeah. I often will buy things along the way and maybe sometimes throw out a couple of things if they're wrecked, but not very often. I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to clothes. I have a few closets that are very full. Going back into the packing thing, a lot of people talk about what style of packing to use, the roll method, the bag method where you put it in a vacuum sealed bag. I've tried them all. For me, the roll method is the one that works the best, rolling everything up tiny and putting it all in that way. But it might not work for you and it might not work for your type of luggage that you have. Maybe you've got a backpack and you want everything flat down the bottom. Well, you make that flat and then you roll. Or maybe you've got a suitcase and rolling in your suitcase doesn't work. Do what is best for you. There is so many YouTube tutorials on you should do it this way or you should do it that way. Just do what works for you. If it fits in your bag and you can fit more in, go for it. That's the best way to do it. Now, this is a little tip that my parents tell me all the time to do before I travel. I hadn't actually thought about how important of a tip this actually was, which is turning off all your taps at home. If you either live alone or you live with a family and you're all going away and nobody's going to be home, turn off all your taps that are linked to anything. So in my case, it was my washing machine. I didn't turn the taps off at the actual tap before it goes into the washing machine. And when I came back, somehow inside my washing machine, it sprung a leak and my washing machine had filled up on the inside so much that it overflowed and flooded the floor in my laundry, which then seeped out to the other room with carpet. So when I got home and I walked closer to the laundry and I started sloshing in the carpet, I knew something was wrong. I couldn't find where the leak was to start with because I hadn't opened the lid to the washing machine. I think it took me about half an hour of checking everywhere, looking if there was a hole in the roof, if there'd been rain, where did this come from? Until I actually saw a little drip come down the side of the washing machine, which gave me an inkling to open it and see it was filled to the brim. So now I turn off every single tap that I can find in my house to make sure that never happens again. I hope it never happens again and I hope it never happens to you, but it's good to know. Also, fridges have a holiday mode. I don't know if you've ever used this mode. It's meant to be a power saver while you're away. I don't exactly know what it does. I kind of push it, put it on. I don't know if it works, but it's there to help me. Anything that's going to save me money, maybe save me power. I'm going to push that button. Not all fridges have it. Only the newer fridges have it. Also cleaning out your fridge. Don't forget to do that. Oh, I have left accidentally something in my fridge that I didn't see. You come back and you think someone's died in your house. It's just something in your fridge. Clean out your fridge. I try to lessen my load the closer I get to my trip. Just before I leave, if there is something that's left behind, I will give it to whoever's driving me to the airport, which is either my brother or my mum, and just say, here you go, have some fruit and veg, whatever's left. Most of the time I try not to have very much, but there might still be something that I haven't got to. So I give it to them and they they can have it because there's no point in it sitting in my fridge for three months. Well, I hope I have given you some good little tips and a little bit of insight in how I prepare for a trip. And it is very stressful. The week of the trip, I will often pack all my stuff, then start to cull. 
So put in everything I think I need and then go, okay, I don't need three of those takeout. I'll only have two t-shirts. I'll only have so many. I pack a lot of knickers. I don't like the thought of being stuck with dirty knickers. So I always pack way more than I need. I often get to wash them along the way, but especially if you're going out hiking for a long time. mm -mm. Oh, big tip. If you're going hiking, Something that I actually took a lot with me on my last trip are body wipes. So you can use them. Basically, it's the shower without having a shower. So body wipes are great. I love them. I live by them. And you will never smell if you use body wipes, even if you haven't showered because you're cleaning all the bits you need to clean. They are designed to be body wipes and clean the areas you need them to clean. So I use them, especially when I'm out hiking or in Africa and there's no showers for a while. They are super important. They're good for your feet as well, especially if some people have super stinky feet. They give them a good clean and they, they don't smell anymore. So they're really handy. I use them a lot. I took a lot away with me and use them heaps. I'm sure I'm going to think of other things to tell you, but for now, that's all I can think of. If you have any questions, write to me. I love hearing from you. I'm getting some amazing feedback from people. You are the reason I'm doing this. It makes me so happy. Messages on Instagram and emails. I just got a beautiful email from somebody saying that they really felt inspired from one of our episodes. It makes me happy. It makes me wanting to keep doing this. Sometimes I think, oh, do I want to keep doing this? I'm so busy. I've got rehearsals for a show. I'm doing, I've got jobs booked in. I've got all these things happening. But those messages make me want to keep going. So thank you. Keep them coming. I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. Taking the time to reach out to me. I appreciate it so much. I'm doing this for you. Thank you. Keep listening and happy travels. Thanks for listening to With You Every Step, hosted by Michelle Lee. We do hope you enjoyed listening. And if you did, make sure you tell everybody. If you didn't, nobody likes a Debbie Downer. Please subscribe to get up to date with our latest releases and give us a thumbs up on our social media at With You Every Step. We love to hear from you. If you have any questions or inquiries, head to the Contact Us page at our website, michellelee.com. That's also where you'll find all our blogs mentioned in the podcast. We love to hear from you and if we have inspired you to travel. Thanks for listening. Love life and adventure on.